They were kept in horrific conditions for 30 years, held by invisible handcuffs, say the police, who are now trying to work out what kept three women virtual slaves in a South London home. Officers said the couple arrested in connection with their investigation had been detained before, but wouldn't go into more detail. The three women who were rescued last month are now being given specialist care by doctors and psychologists. Our Home Affairs correspondent Simon Israel has the latest. The plight of the three women has today been variously described as brainwashing, grooming and enslavement, spanning 30 years inside a house in the heart of London. Their refusal to escape was, police say, down to fear induced by years of emotional abuse, like invisible handcuffs. People feel they're controlled, people feel they have to do as they're told, uh, and yet, to the naked eye, there's no control whatsoever. It's all psychological, it might be through fear, um, and that's what we're looking at. So the investigation will take, police say, a long time. The 67-year-old man and woman arrested yesterday have been released on bail, but are now also under investigation for immigration offences. Their nationalities remain undisclosed. Today it emerged the couple had been arrested in the 70s, and they're also believed to have had contact with social services. The location of this alleged house of slavery has been narrowed down to this area of South London, but police are still refusing to reveal its exact location. Clearly, this is no straightforward case. Human trafficking, police say, is not an issue, but domestic servitude most certainly is. And they add that for the last 30 years, what may have appeared to have been an ordinary family in an ordinary house, in an ordinary street, is turning out to be anything but that. The women's story is barely told. 30 years of suffering, including police say physical beatings, takes time to unravel. Dr. Juliet Cohen has examined many victims of slavery and knows how difficult it can be to establish a complete picture. When somebody first um, emerges from a prolonged period of captivity like this, they're really not in any mental state to give a very detailed, clear, chronological account, such as we're used to in legal proceedings. The first priority is to simply look after people who are perhaps very evidently suffering and traumatised. One of the things I have to be certain of is that I have got the trust of the victims. That is my priority here. I have to work very carefully with the victims. I have to do that with specialist professional help. This isn't like other cases where you can just have a conversation with people and update them about the events that have taken place. I have to do this very slowly and I have to make sure that they understand what the police are doing. There are now 37 officers assigned to this investigation, the entire human trafficking unit at the Met. A 12-hour search of the house has resulted in 55 bags of evidence and this inquiry, police say, will take many months. It's now four weeks since the 69-year-old Malaysian, the 57-year-old Irish woman and the 30-year-old British woman were extricated from their captivity. Slowly, more details are emerging. It's reported, though not confirmed, the British woman never went to school and the Malaysian suffered a stroke which never got medical attention. How they lived under the radar for so long will also have to be addressed.